Now, we're hearing some horror stories from released hostages, including brothers, uh, 12-year-old Yagil and 16-year-old Orr, who were freed this week as part of Israel's ceasefire deal with Hamas. Uh, their uncle has described how they were deliberately burnt with the exhaust uh, pipe of a motorbike, uh, so they would have a burn that would mark them if they ever escaped, or something that would identify them. He also said the boys and other children held captive by the terrorists were often moved from location to location and drugged to keep them compliant. These are just uh, horrific, and, and we've got still so many who... who, who have not returned and, and there's conflicting reports about some of the youngest hostages uh, not surviving. Who, who There's reports, uh, for example, the 10-month-old baby has been killed. Mm. Th th these are sickening to read, uh, and aren't they, Rita? I mean, you read these, how could somebody mm. do that to a child? And, and, you know, we talk about to a 12 -year -old. war crimes. Well, these are most... Yeah, exactly. These are most horrendous war crimes you can imagine. I'm not surprised, knowing what else we know about Hamas and their propensity, for instance, to throw homosexuals off the top of high buildings and things like that. They are clearly inhuman in their actions to other people and apparently to their own children, who they're happy to put in as, as shields. But what, what, of course, is really... It puzzles me and sickens me is the fact that so many people here in the West, here in Australia, the Sydney Theatre Company, for instance, apparently they don't get the same reports on their iPhones that you and I get. They, they, they cannot re be reading these stories or they'd know that they've made a very foolish mm. mistake and backing the wrong side and backing the Palestinians in this, con in this conflict. Well, uh, talking about that, reality TV personality and podcast host Abby Chatfield has announced that she will not platform Zionists on her podcast. Uh, she said they are not welcome. Have a listen. I didn't get an anti-vaxxer on to talk to me, to see how to hear them out. I didn't get someone who is anti-abortion on to hear them out. I would not get someone on who was transphobic to hear them out. I wouldn't get people on that I vehemently disagree with. And I'm not going to do that. I'm so sorry. I'm not going to do it. Nick, I do wonder, does she even know what a Zionist is uh, to, to be that hostile, to not even have... Uh, the tolerance to have someone with a different opinion or someone who's a Zionist on her program to, to have a ban there. I really wonder if she even knows what it means. I don't think she does, Rita. This is, the, this is the ironic thing about this story, isn't it? You have a reality TV star who is so detached from reality that she thinks it's a reasonable position to back the terrorists. You know, that's where we're at in this. She obviously doesn't know mm. about Zionism, as you say. She doesn't know that the Zionist movement arose uh, and really gained steam, of course, because of the Holocaust, the slaughter of six million Jews by, by uh, Nazi Germany. So, you know, the, the, she, she obviously hasn't got a head across this, nor the fact that the Palestinians' argument to be the, the native people, you know, the First Nations people, is completely uh, erroneous and contested. She hasn't followed this one inch, and it's, it's ignorance with which people argue with such certainty, which is the really ugly development of this mm. particular story. Nick Cater, thank you so much for your time this evening.